So this is my painting that I've been researching for Tagging the Treasures and it's called Portrait of a Lady um, by an artist called Hector Caffieri who probably um, not many of you will have heard of because um, I certainly haven't and I've never spoken to anybody before this project who had heard of him. When I first looked round for a painting, um, this one jumped out to me because it's quite different to the rest of the collection in Tagging the Treasures. There were a lot of Anne stalls, um, you know, great big paintings uh, that were very prominent, very Victorian looking, uh, a lot of dead animals and so on, which wasn't really my thing. Um, but what I liked about this was I, th I just thought it was really pretty. As I said, I hadn't heard of the painter, but I thought I probably would be able to find out quite a lot about him, being called Hector Caffieri. So I thought, well, he's obviously foreign, and that probably means that he's good, <laughs> because uh, I guess that you think of like foreign French painters and the Impressionists and so on. And to me, it looked like a quality painting. It looked like somebody knew what they were doing. So the first thing that I did was went home and put it in the computer, Hector Caffieri. And very, very little came up. I expected to be a big Wikipedia entry and so on that would tell me all the information that I needed and then I could just like copy and paste it really. But there was very, very little there. Uh, there was the odd artist blog site that sort of uh, indicated when he was born and when he died, which was 1847, his birth, and that he died um, in the 1930s, I think it was 1932. So uh, it also said that he was trained, um, it was a Royal Academician, that he was trained in Paris by a chap called Bonnat and another chap called Leboeuf, but again, that meant nothing to me. So, it was where to go from then, really. So, um, I went over to the library, and we'd been trained um, in using the computers at the library by a senior librarian, and uh, he showed us how to look at the censuses and so on, and I'd done a little bit of family research before, which I enjoyed, so I thought I'd look up the cafe area and see if I could find him, which I did, so I managed to find out that he was indeed born in Cheltenham, which I'd already found out, um, that he then moved to London, I found him in London, I found his school, so I sort of like tra tracked him through his life until the early 20th century, and it did state that he did live in France for a while, so I knew that it probably was going to lose his trace round about um, 1900. Anyway, um, I then sort of like looked further into it and in the records in Ancestry it actually cited a couple of books where you could find information on Hector Caffieri. So I went over to Harry's Museum and looked him up in a couple of books. There was a book by a chap called Millier, Henry Millier, um, I think that's his name, and that was uh, about Victorian watercolourists. So Hector Caffieri I found out was well known as a Victorian watercolourist but clearly this wasn't a watercolour, it was an oil. So that then kind of got me thinking about this painting because when I looked at the images in Google on Caffieri they were all very very different to this painting. Um, a lot of them were coastal scenes and he's cited usually as a British watercolourist who paints watercolour scenes and clearly that isn't anything like that and when you look through images there are very very few portraits that are done by Caffieri. So it was Again, you know, I was kind of like intrigued why this man had painted this picture which was very beautiful and just very different than his other scenes. So I then looked at the um, newspaper articles of the time and Caffieri came up with quite regularity and he was obviously very important as a painter in Victorian England. Um, it was exhibited widely and usually to acclaim, you know, the critics in like the Glasgow journals and Liverpool and London all said, you know, how beautifully he painted, that he was technically very accurate. Um, it also said that uh, Princess Alexandria in 1900 had loaned one of his paintings to an exhibition. So, you know, clearly he was very collectible at the time. And I sort of wondered again, you know, why this man sort of fell out of favour really? Why, why is he not critically acclaimed? You know, because he did have pedigree. And when you look at all of this information, you think, you know, people out there must know something about him, but it was so difficult to track down. Uh, I became a bit obsessed, I suppose, about Caffieri. I was um, trying to find him anywhere that I could. I even looked on eBay and I gleaned something from eBay, which I thought was really exciting. And that was, um, it was an article in the Daily Sketch from the 1880s that was actually about the Newlyn School, but it came up under the search of Caffieri in eBay. 
Now, I've never seen Caffieri linked to Newling. And Newlyn are obviously a really important art school in Britain, you know, that are really critically acclaimed. But in the 1880s, when Stanhope Forbes was actually being admitted um, to the Royal, to, it was uh, elected for RI, it was Caffieri who was already there and who'd already um, broken into the Royal Academy with his beautiful coastal scenes. And that sort of led the way for Stanhope Forbes to get in there, which I think is just like really interesting, you know, that this man was you know, perhaps even a forerunner for Newling and paved the way for Stanhope Forbes. So then, um, because as I say, I was talking, eating and breathing Caffieri at this point because I felt quite indignant that nobody knew about him and I think he's wonderful and I think that potentially, you know, he was like a trailblazer for the Newling school and has been forgotten. It, it then came to holiday time, so my daughter and son are seven and five, but I decided to drag them along and, and bring them into the research because I think it's really important that they're able to see research at first hand and it's really exciting for us to be able to like, uncover this treasure. So I set a little quiz for my daughter um, to try and find, to track down who donated this picture because that's the other thing that intrigued me, you know, who would give this beautiful painting to the, this collection and why? So we managed to find in the, uh, in the council minutes from 1945 an indication that it was from a lady called Mrs A. M. Catterall who lived in a place called Hindhead in Surrey. So obviously she wasn't local, which I think most of the donors were local. So myself and Sadie set off to try and find out about Mrs A. M. Catterall. Well, eventually we found Mrs A. M. Catterall and we managed to link her to a chap called Mr F W Catterall and Mr F W Catterall was an architect in Lytham's hands in the early 20th century and he was actually a very important chap, Frederick William Catterall. He came from Preston, Annie Mary, who was his wife, this was all found out by Sadie by the way, she'd be able to tell you all about Annie Mary Catterall. Um, Annie Mary came from Blackburn they met, they were at some point obviously captivated by Lytham's and Tans when he was working here, building the Grand Hotel. Which research on the painting, I decided to divide it up into three parts. The first was the biographical information of Caffieri. The second was the painting itself and the third was information about the donor who um, it said was A.M. Catterall of Little Nookcombe, Hindhead, Surrey. On the 24th of the 12.45 she donated it. So I began with the internet, and quite a lot of information that we were given from the internet was from a chap called H.A. Malalia in a dictionary of British watercolour artists. So I started by trying to cross-reference the information that he'd given about Caffieri. 
and substantiate it through facts. We began with information from the census on Caffieri. So Malaria had said that he was born in 1847 and lived in Cheltenham. I managed to get hold of census records of Cheltenham for 1851 and found Heston Caffey Red. Well, that's actually Hector Caffieri. It's quite difficult to read, but, um, especially with my eyes. But I think here you can just about spot Caffieri here. And here we've got Hector Junior, who was aged three at the time in 1851, so that ties in with the 1847 birth date. And again, ten years later we found him. And here is actually a college in Mid Norton. So Hector, it's very difficult to see, especially with my eyesight, I need my glasses on. But there we go, Hector Caffieri. He's 13 there, Gloucestershire, Cheltenham. So we've got him again there. 1871 is missing, and I think I know why that is, but I'll go through that after. And here we have him in 1881, and he is down here as a... He's living with somebody. I can spot it. He's an artist. I'm sure he's here somewhere. Artist, painter, Hector Caffieri. He's a lodger, born in Cheltenham. And here, interestingly, he's got these short-sighted. So, so this is all from the library and the records there. As well as his birth certificate, which managed to find him in the birth index. Um, and again, this is in the first quarter of, um, of 1847, so we're pretty sure that we've got the same chap and is born in Cheltenham. And he is Caffieri. He's Hector Edward Felipe Caffieri. In Cheltenham. So, found out a little bit about him. And also, because we found out that he was from Cheltenham, wanted to find out a little more about his background and also whether he was related to some famous cafeteries of France. There's a chap called Mike Grindley in Cheltenham who'd written um, a, a a document, a journal, about the cafeteries from France. So I wrote off to Cheltenham Local History Society and they kindly wrote back to me and sent this, which gave some background about Caffieri's life, about his father, about his grandfather. Really interesting stuff which Mike Grindley has done. And also we've got a picture of Hector and a record of the blue plaque that's actually up in Cheltenham. So, so that was wonderful to see him. So then we went on to the painting. Now, it was widely renowned as being taught by two famous um, artists, one called Leon Bonnat, and the other one I think was called Le, Le Berfre. Um, and Bonnat, when you look at his style of work, a lot of it is portraiture. And a lot of it, I think, looks quite similar to this. So I thought that maybe Caffieri, who normally did coastal scenes, which look very much like this, and who was known as a watercolourist, Lefebvre, sorry is the name of the other chap. So here we've got his trained in Paris under Leon Bonnat and Jules Joseph Lebeuvre. They're both academicians. But that, these paintings look very, very different to that. So I wondered whether or not he was actually painting under the tutelage of Bonnet at the time. That's why it looks so similar. So I was quite excited when then I managed to find a reference to Caffieri. And here, British and Irish paintings in public collections, edited by Christopher Wright. On page 224, he's got Hector Caffieri, Lytham St. Sands, Lancashire, Borough Art Collection, and Lady, 1869. So if it was painted in 1869, that made Caffieri 22 at the time. So um, I think quite likely he would have actually been tutored. We know that he wasn't in England, or we think he wasn't in England in 1871, because there's no record of it. 
So I think possibly he's being taught by Bonnet, which is exciting. <laughs> so here as well, I've done some more research to find out if Bonnet was actually tutoring in Paris in 1869, and he was. We've got an account here of Thomas Eakins, who was actually another student in the atelier in 1869, where Bonnet was teaching privately, and he was teaching portraiture. So I'm hoping that that means that this is an account of Cafieri as a very young man, really, learning his work. We've got his signature here, H. Cafieri, which is quite clear. And I've actually got from the Benezit Guide, which I found from the Harris Museum. I found it in here. His signature. As you can see, it's the same signature, even though it was far more wobbly, but Cafier was 85 when he died, so I think possibly it would have changed with time. He was prolific. These are all the auction records of paintings that have been sold. And here, which I found from Liverpool Central Library, um, these are where he exhibited at uh, the Mal Galleries as Royal British Artist from 1876, so it was a little while after this was painted. But it takes you right through and you see that it was quite prolific up to 1888, which is when, um, around then, he started going over to, to France more. And that may be because his father died in Boulogne in 1890, so that's possibly a link. So then, on from there, I looked at Catalogue, A.M. Catalogue, what Mrs. A.M. Catalogue and try to find out a little more about her. So we started with the General Purpose Committee Map Notes. Now it says that it was the 24th of December 1945 that this donation was made, but actually here, we've got here the Livingston Times Art Collection on the 17th of December 1945, and we have um, Caffieri, watercolour by Prouch Jr., oil painting by Caffieri, watercolour by F.W. Catterall, Ambleside by Cuthbert Rigby, given by Mrs. A.M. Catterall of Little Nook and Hindhead, Surrey. Because we had an F.W. Catterall there, who was a painter, um, or there's been a watercolour that's been um, submitted by Mrs. A.M. Catterall, I assume that there's some sort of relationship between them. So I started researching then through the censuses, and sure enough, we found the catawalls. Um, again, this is quite difficult to see, but here you can see Frederick W. Catterall, architect, and his wife, Annie Mary Catterall. So, from that, we could establish a link. Um, they were at the time. I think that says Clifton Drive. They were certainly in St Anne's. They were living in St Anne's at the time. This is in 1901. So, it's quite good to establish that time. From then, when I looked at FW Catterall, I found out that he was actually responsible for the building of the Grand Hotel, which is a hotel that's still here in St Anne's. And as you can see, from this um, heritage list. It was born, built F.W. Catterall in 1897 for Mrs. Rose Holloway. We actually went to the ground and spoke to the general manager there who told us what we were about. Rose Holloway, Kitty Holloway, who um, commissioned the building. Um, so that was interesting to hear his take on it, you know, and he was very supportive of the work that we did. So it's a lovely link to the presence and times from here. Oh, there she is. Oh, oh my word. Can you stand? Yeah, thank you. Look over here. This one is there. Mum, what do you think I'll leave it to you?